everybody. Welcome back to It's a Twin Thing. It's Aspen, the better half of the Summer's Twins. And Ashley, the best half of the Summer's Twins. Do you think we should tell them that you're not on this interview, or should we just see if anybody notices? Um, we should tell them. Mm, yeah, let's tell them. We <laughs> okay. don't want to confuse people. Well, I kind of already did tell them. I also oh. feel like I tend to dominate the conversation, so I wouldn't want people to think I just didn't let you talk the whole time. Yeah. We had a really amazing guest on this interview. We had just scheduled the interview, and then... 12 hours later, Ashley had a doctor's appointment that got scheduled with this doctor that she had been having a really hard time getting in to see. So it was unavoidable. And our amazing guest, Linda, does not live in the United States. And it was a little bit tricky to schedule something because most of the time she was available. Ashley and I were in classes. So I just decided to keep the interview and said, sorry, Ashley, but I'm super excited for her to get to listen. But you missed out. I know. I'm so, I wasn't snoozing. I was at the doctor. I'm so sad because you keep just saying how good it was, and I wish I could have been there. Well, it is time for the Good News Minute. Oh, wait, inspirational in it. Sorry. Oh, my gosh, Aspen. What is wrong with you? I know. I forgot that's what we call it, even though it's been 20-something episodes of Twinspiration. I just can't even. I quit. Okay. You have to do the inspirational in it. Fine, but they're going to have to listen to me talk for the next 45 minutes. Okay, okay, I'll do it. Don't worry. Then I'll quit after. (laughs) You said yesterday that you were never doing a podcast episode again, so I don't believe you that you quit. I'm sticking my tongue out at you. Mm. I see. Okay. Well, the other people can't see, so that's it. Okay. Now I don't even know what I was going to say. You keep distracting me. Zip your lips and throw away the key. The inspirational in it for this week is about, drum roll please, the Mm. Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. (laughs) Wow, that's really impressive. The Rockefeller Center Christmas tree, which you might just think it's a normal Christmas tree, but how they found it this year was the head gardener for Rockefeller Center drove all around New York looking for the perfect tree and noticed it in somebody's literal backyard or front yard of their house. And he just went up to them and was talking to the people and was like, I'm here to look at your tree. And the people who owned the tree were Matt and Jackie McGinley. They agreed to donate their tree from their yard to the Rockefeller Center so that they could have the perfect Christmas tree for this year. They said that they agreed to donate it because they hoped that it would bring joy to other people during the holiday season since the Rockefeller tree is such a big thing in New York and a part of the holiday season. It's also really cool that the gardener drives all around the state trying to find the best tree. Yeah, I thought this story was really interesting because I just didn't know that that's how they picked the Rockefeller tree. I thought they just drove into a forest somewhere. It was a fun story and I really wanted to find a holiday-ish one for this episode and the um, number of good news stories that you can find online is really lacking so that's why you guys should be thankful that we tell you good news because nobody wants to talk about good news anymore and it's kind of devastating. Yeah you guys should be thankful to us. (laughs) That's your inspirational in it is that we give you good news every week. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. Just kidding. Don't worry. Yes, don't worry. Be happy. And if anybody can talk about being happy, it is our guest, Linda LeClaire, who is North America's leading expert on laughter, which Aww. I bet you didn't even know was a thing. But she runs a laughter yoga studio where she basically teaches people different exercises and things to get them to make themselves laugh. And through laughter, it produces all of these biological responses that help the body heal and help the mind heal and help you deal with your emotions. It was honestly so interesting. I had never heard of any of this before, and I learned so much talking to her. And she was also one of the most positive, uplifting people that I've ever had the privilege of talking to. It was just so fun. Ashley, I'm excited to hear what you think after you listen to this. Me too. Well, I'm excited to tell you not to hear what I think because I'll know in my brain what I think. Except for you kind of hear your own thoughts. 
That's true. You know what I was wondering? Well, I mean, I wasn't really wondering this, but people always say that twins are like the same person. So when you're a twin, if you are talking to yourself, it's kind of like your twin is talking to you. Not really at all, but (laughs) good try. Okay, thanks. All right, without further ado, here is Linda LeClaire. Yay! Hi, Linda. Thank you so much for doing this. It's great to meet you. Like I said, I usually would have my co-host Ashley with me, but she was not able to make it today. So I'm going to pretend to be both of us, but we look exactly alike, so you're not missing much. (laughs) That's the beauty of being twins. (laughs) Exactly. Did you have any siblings growing up? Oh, yes, I have two brothers. Uh, both are both of them are in Montreal, so I'm the first born. And then I have a brother who's a musician. He's a pianist, a classical pianist. And the other one is uh, uh, in health. He's working in health, so he's an osteopath. So, yes, I don't have a twin, though. <laughs> but we have twins in the family. <laughs> oh, cool. Well, I was really excited to interview you today because I've never heard of anybody who does something quite like what you do. You say that you are North America's leading expert on laughter, which is quite the cool title. Can you just tell our listeners a little bit about what it is that you do and what that means? Well, I train people. I teach them a method to allow them to use intentional laughter as a stress coping mechanism or just to feel better, to be able to be able to communicate in a more positive way, to get along. Actually, right now, that's a big word in my in my vocabulary, getting getting along with people. And when you laugh, what happens is that you're opening your heart and you're no longer in your head and your mental. So and laughter yoga is a very unique method because it allows us to laugh without a reason. So we don't rely on jokes, humor or comedy, we simply laugh as a physical exercise to begin with. But because we are looking at each other, and we're being kind of playful, and we're acting in a childlike, playful way. Yeah, that's exactly what we do. So because of that, then our laughter, who's at the beginning a bit like it's simulated, then it becomes natural. And it's so contagious. I love, love, love it, because you don't have to think You don't have to wait for something to make you laugh. You just do it. And then your whole body is getting benefits because your breathing changes, your heartbeat goes faster, and the blood flows faster in your body. Your lymphatic system is activated. Your immune system is activated. It's boosted. It's so very good for everything. Everything. (laughs) That's so interesting. I don't think that, I mean, I certainly wasn't aware of that there's biological impacts of laughter I think that's really cool oh yeah well just think how when you have a big hearty laugh like once you're done laughing while you're laughing you're not thinking you're just right there in the present you're in your zone so you don't think of anything you're laughing simply and after you're done laughing how relaxed do you feel so that's totally physical because then your whole body is <sighs> yeah that's so cool so when people do laughter yoga with you then do you think that they're able to be more open to laughter throughout the day is that kind of the goal oh for sure it's like you train your laughter muscles so the more you laugh the more you find things funny i'm sure that in your friends like if you look around you if 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 you have friends who are like they feel like they're laughing more they're cheerful Look how they react at situations when things are not so easy. They Mm. are kind of wiser, I was going to say, because they take things, they see things differently. And it's like, okay, 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 this is happening. I might be stressed. I might be frustrated, unhappy or, or upset, but okay. And sometimes they just start to laugh in the middle of something that's not funny to begin with. And they're helping everybody because they're laughing. Everybody starts to laugh or smile. Yeah, that's a really good point because I feel like it can be so easy to just get really bogged down in everything that's going on. And there's so many things out of our control in life. I just went through an experience where everything was going wrong, like to the point where it was almost comical. But when we were stuck in the thick of it, it was like you just Ah. couldn't deal with it. And then there was a couple people who every time that something else would go wrong, they were just like, 
you just have to laugh at this. And that really helped put it in perspective because we couldn't control it. And at the end of the day, it wasn't going to ruin our lives. It was just something that was difficult in the moment, but it really helped to like have that perspective and be able to look back on it and be like, well, in two years, this is just going to be funny. So why don't we just think about it as being funny right now? Yeah, exactly. And two years is is long, long <laughs> in front of you. So <laughs> it might even be like two weeks or next week. Yeah. We're going to look at that and we're going to think, oh my goodness, what was that a rotten day or what? Like everything, one thing after the other. At some point, you're right. Like, what can you do? <laughs> okay, I <laughs> give up. <laughs> Universe, I give up. <laughs> So how did you get interested in studying laughter? Well, I became a very serious and stressed out grown up uh, working in very high, high in responsibilities uh, mm -hmm. positions. So I was the executive director of a hospital foundation. So I was responsible to raise some money to pay for many things that were so needed in the hospital. I was supervising to 300 350 people and like the objectives that I had like the goals that they gave me were so high and I, I ended up like working 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 and one day I was driving on a very dense highway and I got stuck in traffic and the guy next to me like behind my car like he didn't see that I was not moving and so he rear-ended my my vehicle And I ended up with a, an injury, like the beautiful whiplash that everybody's experiencing in car accidents. Well, I got that. And that brought me to do physiotherapy for months. And one day that I was feeling miserable because it was painful. I was like, my whole body was in pain and I could not turn my head anymore. And it was really like, it felt like I'm never going to be okay again. Like I'm here every, every other day and things are not improving. It's like, <laughs> and I didn't want people to see me crying. I was waiting for my turn at the physiotherapy clinic. And then I grabbed the magazine that, that was on the pile next to me, opened it to hide my face and the first thing that I saw was a picture of a beautiful blonde woman and she was holding a wood spoon in one hand and a big rubber chicken in the other one and she like the picture of her was like ah she was having a big smile on her face and the title of the article was laugh it off and I took this as a personal message I thought oh dear okay okay step back okay, I think that I'm taking things way too seriously. And starting to write, to read the article, they were describing like people at work, how stressed we are, like that we're afraid to lose our jobs, like the, the, the goals are impossible to reach, we have to do more with less, the financial, like everything. They were describing me. The only thing that was missing in that, in that article was my name. I was there. Right next to that, there was another box where they were describing all the benefits of laughter and your digestion, breathing, uh, immune system, the nervous system, the endorphins, la, 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 la. And reading that, I asked myself, like, I, I started to wonder, when is the last time that I really, really had a good laugh? And I could not remember. It happened when I was a student at the university, but that was quite a long time ago. I'm laughing like that when I'm seeing my cousins, but we don't even see each other every year. And just realizing that I was no longer laughing like that, free laughter, laughter. This got me really, really sad because I thought, wow, this was so, so important and it was so freeing and it disappeared from my life. And I didn't even notice that it's, it's gone. What happened to me? And there and then I decided that I had to do something about that. And they were talking about laughter yoga for the rest of the article, describing like it's exercises where you put your body in the physical exercise. But even if you simulate your, your laughter, like your body doesn't know the difference between simulate and real laughter, natural laughter. And soon after you start doing the exercise, your laughter becomes natural, it's contagious, and it's genuine. So you enjoy, I would say, almost all the benefits from laughter, even if you do it as an exercise. And they were talking about uh, a training. So you could train to become a laughter yoga trainer or leader. And I thought, oh, 
okay, so maybe I should study that for myself and feel better. And there was a training in Montreal. I live in the province of Quebec. So there was a training in Montreal, the only weekend that I didn't have anything on my schedule. No conference, no meeting, no big events, no fundraising events, no family events, nothing. This only weekend where they were coming here to train people for the first time in Canada, I was free. So I went there. Thank you, the car accident. I call this a, a <laughs> gift that was not so well wrapped. Because of that, I've rediscovered my laughter and I never let it go. Well, that's amazing. It definitely sounds like it was fate for you to uh, discover yeah. that. How long ago was that? It was 20 years ago. I, and this was in spring 2003 that I found myself in that room in a hotel downtown Montreal with a group of maybe 15 adults like men women all ages we just rediscovered our laughter there it's it's weird because the first exercise well first of all laughter yoga is was born in india the method that we use now this was born in india it was a medical doctor and his wife who is a yoga teacher who started the first laughter club in a park in mumbai and they came to Montreal. So this Indian doctor with his wife were downtown Montreal with me. And the first thing that they asked us to do in the morning was you're going to say your name and laugh. You're going to say where you're from and laugh. And you're going to say what you do for a living and laugh. And I remember thinking, um, no, that's not funny. And this is ridiculous. And what have I put myself into? But what happens when you hear someone laughing? you start laughing too. And I was told that I was supposed to laugh. So my turn came, I was probably the number six or seven in the group. And I was able to do the exercise. So I said my name and I laughed and I had like, it was hard for me to say what I was doing for a living because I was laughing so much. And when the everybody are like, when everybody in the group finished, like I was laughing so hard, my cheeks hurt. So I felt like, oh, okay, okay, I could do that. Dr. Kateria started to, to speak and he was talking and talking. And then we did the first round of laughter exercises. We were standing up. And when we went on the floor for the laughter meditation, this guy was not far from me. And he started to laugh like, uh, 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 with a very, very low voice. <laughs> And I lost it. I started to laugh. I laughed so hard. There, I remember to this day, the way that I felt. I was able to do it. We went out for lunch, came back. He talked again, did the exercise, the second round of exercises on the floor for the laughter meditation. This guy was not too far from me again. <laughs> and once again, I lost it. I, I laughed so hard. And that night, I can tell you, I was not feeling pain in my neck. And that was because of the endorphin. The endorphins are were flowing in my body. That's the happy chemical. So they are painkiller and they're antidepressant. So because of that, that I could sleep and have no pain, and I found laughter there on the floor on that day, it felt like I have to do this for the rest of my life because this feels so good. So then how did you decide to go from doing that training to starting your my business? Yoga? Yeah, your business. And was that scary to take that leap from doing something completely different from what you had been doing? Oh, yes, you can say that again. Yeah, because <laughs> at first I, I was still having my stressful job. So I was I kept working and there was a change in the management and they decided to reorganize the areas and my territory was well. I, I was in charge of the Western part of Quebec and they decided to change this. So I lost my job and I was seriously devastated. And that night, I remember I was listening to the radio on, on my way to something in my car and I heard laughter club and I thought, oh, I have to go there. This was probably, I don't know, nine months after I did my leader training. So nine months after I, I did that, I went to a laughter club session here in my community and I went to introduce myself to the, the man who started the laughter club. And I said, well, if you ever need someone to replace you or need help for something, I'm here. And he says, oh, 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 I wanted to get in touch with you. So take care of this one and I'll start another one. So this was in November 2003. And I started uh, to go and run this laughter club 
on a weekly basis for 20 years. We celebrated, actually. We celebrated the 20th anniversary this week. And yeah, this was quite something. And even if sometimes I think, well, it's nothing, but 20 years is a long time and it, it requires like dedication. You need to be there. And, and it helped me to go through so many things in my life. Like I was able to survive because of that, because while I'm there, I'm laughing and I'm, I'm forgetting about everything else. I'm just present and I'm completely alive, not worrying, just laughing, taking care of that. I took part-time jobs until 2009. And in 2009, I jumped full-time in my business because I was doing, I was running training seminars. I was running sessions. I was hired by companies, um, non-for-profits, organizations. And in 2009, I went full-time. And that year, I've co-wrote a book with my friend and colleague in France, and this was published in France. I've created an app to help people laugh. I have audio CDs. I've created online programs that you can you can subscribe to that. And then there's some exercises that we do together. Sometimes it's videos, audios, paper, like whatever. So it's like since 2009, it's one thing after the other that I've created. And there's always something, always something that I'm channeling to, ooh, 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 ooh let's do this. <laughs> It sounds like you're so passionate about getting this out there and making it accessible and available to as many people as possible, which, like I said, I've never heard of this until I found you. And I think it's something that sounds really beneficial and more people should know about and should be aware of. But I was wondering if it's ever hard for you to kind of get people on board or convince them that this is something that they should try. Like, do people ever have doubts about it? Yeah, it depends, like, because like, I, I see two, two types of people that would find this difficult. Like sometimes when I work with a, a team at work, they're at work. So obviously their brain is like, I, I am working here. I'm not here to play. So I have to make sure that I use all my <laughs> skills to make them jump aboard the happy train with me, because this is not something that like, they have to allow themselves to participate. And some things that I, something that I tell people is like, what's the worst thing that can happen? Is that you're going to laugh, you're going to feel better, and you're going to be refreshed by what we're going to do together. So don't be afraid for people to laugh at you or to judge you because we're all doing it at the same time at my signal. We're not laughing at each other. We're laughing with and because each other. They're very different. But I'm not making people laugh. If you decide not to laugh, you won't laugh. That's that's one thing. It's it's funny because I started to record videos on TikTok last year, and this one went viral. And it's funny because sometimes I, I'm I'm looking at people doing duets with me, and sometimes they're just looking and they they write to me or they say uh, it doesn't work. I said, well, <laughs> sure it doesn't work. You have to be willing to laugh. If you're not willing to laugh, if you're looking at that passively and you're just thinking she's not making me laugh, ah. Uh, mm. You won't laugh. You have to decide and you just have to be a bit open mind and be willing to laugh. And it works. <laughs> what's the word? That, what's the worst that can happen? Seriously. I mean, I can definitely see how I might feel self-conscious at first about it. But that's such a good point. Of that, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah. And I feel like we're so conditioned to not have emotions around each other. I'm that person who will like laugh too loud at a joke or something. And I would often felt self-conscious in my classes because I'm the professor made a joke and nobody else is laughing. And I thought it was funny. And then it's like <laughs> embarrassing. But I don't think people should be ashamed to laugh. because <laughs> Everyone loves someone who laughs more. That just makes you seem like such a more positive person I think exactly exactly and you said something it's like it, this is because we rely on the, our sense of humor to laugh like if you find something funny and the guy next to you doesn't find it funny it's because your sense of humor is are, are different my sense of humor is not the same as you yours because we're not the same age we are not the same culture with like so many things experiences that we're having like maybe you see something I don't know. You see something purple and it reminds you of something that was so funny. And I look at that and it's like, what's what's funny about that? I don't get it. Or someone might find this offensive. It's the same thing. It's just different sense of humor. And for most adults, like we laugh because our sense of humor is telling us it's okay. Now it's time for you to laugh. 
So you say that somebody has to decide to laugh, that it's not you're making them laugh. So can you tell us a little bit more about what the process of laughter yoga is? Is it like physical movements and stuff that are supposed to help get you to laugh? Or is it more of just the mental making yourself laugh, I guess? Actually, what we do in a regular laughter yoga session, we start by stretching a little bit and then we do some warm up exercises where we clap and we do, we, we clap and we, we repeat uh, what we call the happy mantra of ho, ho, ha, 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 ho, ho, ha, ha. It puts us in a playful mode already. And then we, there's another uh, warm up exercise where we use uh, gibberish talking. I call this like, I'm just going to send the message to my rational brain, like, don't freak out. This is going to be different. I am entering a play zone. So don't freak out. It's okay. It's okay. I'm doing this because it's healthy. It's good for me. And then we do the exercises, which are some of the laughter exercises that we do are very similar to things that we do on a daily basis. Like, for example, when we do the greetings laughter, we shake hands and we look at each other, but we don't talk. We just laugh. So you, you're you shaking hands with someone and <laughs> and because you, you move from one person to the other, then this way you contaminate each other. Uh, we laugh at our mistakes with the fingers like turned to ourselves like this, or we laugh at things that we accomplish well. We do the cell phone laughter, like it's we pretend someone is telling us something funny and we laugh. <laughs> so you just laugh. The motion that you do creates emotion. That's what we want to do. Like we just want to do the motion, even if we don't laugh for real. Our body doesn't know the difference. So you're activating the happy chemicals in your body. Do you have any stories or moments where either when you're teaching or if you've had people contact you or message you who have read your books or watched your videos or anything of somebody that stood out where it was really impactful for them or like a memorable moment? Oh, yes. Yes. I remember that woman who was telling me that she lived alone and she was working in her cubicle she was not seeing people all day and she said the only place that I laugh is here and I feel so alive when I'm coming when I'm coming here because I I'm I'm lonely most of the times I'm lonely not only do I live alone and work alone I'm lonely the connection there was very very powerful someone else was telling me that they were experiencing very stressful situations in their lives and she said because when I'm here I don't think about them and seriously, my personal experience, I remember one, one night I had to go to the laughter club. So I was leaving at about 6.30. At 6, my friend's sister called me to tell me that Sylvie died. I knew that she was not well, but she called me to tell me that she died just an hour before. And I remember leaving my house and I cried, cried, cried on, a, on my way to the laughter club. I arrived there and I told him, I said, this is a very emotional night for me. So let's do this and uh, we'll see how it goes, but don't expect too much out of me. And while I was there, I was able to laugh and it connected me with, with life itself. And it felt like this is just a part of life. People are coming and they're telling me that they want to come and they want to be there and they need it because the more they laugh, the better they feel. Your problems are still there, but they're no longer obsessing you. You're not a prisoner of them. They're still there, but they're not in your face as much. Yeah, I was going to ask you if there have been times where you just felt like you couldn't do this today or you there's no way that you could laugh and how you dealt with that and kind of overcame that since it's part of your job. If it ever feels like, oh, I just have to do this and it kind of loses meaning for you. I mean, I'm not saying that I laugh when I'm feeling like the example that I gave you with my friend, I could not find a replacement. So I had to go there. I realized that night that even if I was grieving and I was really, really sad, I was able to do it with them. The minute that I sat back in my car, I started to cry again. I've noticed that when I'm experiencing sadness, deep sadness, the best that I can do sometimes is smile and think that this shall pass. So stay there, take care of yourself, and this shall pass. But I know that I'm always able to pretend that I'm laughing. And sometimes it just helps to, you know, I'm. have you ever experienced that? Like you feel like crying, but you can't. It's like... Mm -hmm. It would do me well. I would feel better if I could cry, but I just, I'm not. 
sometimes yeah. I laugh and laugh and then I'm able to cry. So yeah. it's the releasing part. So even like, I'm not saying that whatever happens to you, you always have to laugh. No, no, I would never say something like that. What I would say is like laughter helps you to pad your, the pillow or the what's under you. So whatever life's throwing at you, if you're not taking care of that part, the nature of your heart is to be joyful. So if you're not taking care of that, it's like you just have a very thin yoga mat under your feet. But the more you allow yourself to experience things that are bringing joy to your life and laugh more, the thicker that mat is going to be. So you're still going to fall. You're still going to be, be, be pushed and fall. But if your mat is very thin, then you might hurt yourself. If it's thicker, then you might just bounce a little bit on it. That's what laughter yoga helps me do. And that's what I'm teaching. Just use this to have something that's going to help you bounce back. Because things happen. We're going to experience difficult things, traumatic things, like very deep sadness. This this is a part of life. This is the part. Of, I say this sometimes. I say, well, it's a part of the package. So it comes with the package. I have joy. I have sadness. I'm upset. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that like you experience everything. But if I make sure that I'm increasing the fluffiness of my mat, then I might bounce back faster or I might just bounce without hurting me. I might fall without hurting, like being completely destroyed. Yeah, I think that's such an important point. It can feel hard to accept negative emotions just as much as it can be hard to accept laughter. And we all probably go through stages in our life where we feel like we should just be happy all the time and we feel guilty for not. But then we go through times where we feel like we can't be happy. I think that's just really important that you are sharing this message that laughter isn't going to solve everything and it's not going to make you have no problems in your life, but that it'll just help you get through it. In, in a more positive way and you're you're not going to be completely destroyed you're just going to like okay this is a part of life we have exercises where we laugh at things that are really not funny like there's one that I always think about that like the crying laughter where we cry and go down and then laugh while we go up this is like the situation is not going to change but maybe if I change my reaction it won't be as difficult to go through what's going on. I, I like that one, especially after Christmas when we are getting the, the credit card bills. I say, okay, let's do the no money laughter because we can still laugh without money. So we pull our the pockets of our pants out and we like, um, I don't have money. <laughs> <laughs> or something like the argument laughter. We argue and laugh. It's helping to reprogram our reactions in a way that's not so <clears throat> all the time. Mm -hmm. So how can our listeners do this? Like, how can they find your work or find other resources so that if they're interested in laughter yoga or in making this a part of their lives, they can start to introduce themselves to it? Yeah, well, there's lots of resources on online. Like, first of all, if they want to find my videos on TikTok, I know that I have a bunch of one minute videos there with exercises where we laugh. So this is just to help. It it starts with one minute, but so many are telling me, well, I laughed for 20 minutes after I watched yours and I watched and watched and watched and I was laughing, laughing, laughing. So my name there is Linda Haha -ha Sister. There's some videos on YouTube also. So you can just type either yoga du rire in French or laughter yoga. I'm sure that you can find resources there. My website, there's yoga du rire in French, but I also have yoga du rire slash ENG for Anglais, English. I have an English podcast as well, where you're going to be a guest <laughs> called The Joy Element. But if you want to include laughter in your life, I strongly suggest you that you just make sure that you include it as a daily practice to laugh intentionally. It doesn't have to be a loud and very, it, like you don't need forced laughter. You just need intentional. So my laughter is not loud, but it's like, <laughs> I have the intention to laugh. I know that you can feel it as well. Time yourself, do, the, do it with your friends, like just, just for fun. Okay, we're stressed, let's laugh. Even if you don't feel like it, do it. There's a, a quote that I loved from William James, and it says, we're not laughing because we're happy. We're happy because we laugh. And that's exactly it. When I start laughing, I'm not happy. 
but because I laugh, I feel happier. That's amazing. I love that quote. Oh, uh, and if you'd like, like I have something, it's it's three days, three minutes of laughter with me and three tips and it's called Moral Boost. For sure. We'll definitely share that. And I hope that everyone will try it. I hope so too. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do something with me now? Sure. Appreciation laughter. That's a very important one for me. So we're showing each other that we appreciate each other, either with the thumb up like this or with the index touching the thumb in the same hand. And there's a beautiful symbol behind this. The index represents my ego and the thumb represents the universe. And when we're putting the two together, it's telling us that we are all one. So I appreciate you. <laughs> I appreciate you too. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I love that. Well, we have one question that we always like to ask our guests at the end. Um, we usually like to ask your favorite inspirational quote too, but you know, you just shared the yeah. <laughs> um, William James one, which I love. Before we get to our last question, do you have anything else that you wanted to say or share with our listeners? Well, don't wait for something to make you laugh because some days you might like, you're just in a neutral state of mind. So these days I always say it's when you feel less like laughing that you're needing it the most. So if you say, I don't want to laugh, well, that's probably the day that you need it the most. And what's the worst that can happen is that you're going to laugh at yourself for laughing for nothing. And don't take yourself so seriously all the time. Just for fun, since this podcast is about twins, and I really wish Ashley could have been here, but I know she's going to love listening to this. If you could have an identical twin, do you think that you would want one? Oh, yes, I would. I always wanted to have a sister. That's why I created the Haha -ha Sisterhood, because I wanted to have a sister. Oh, oh, I love that. <laughs> I would love to have a twin. I don't know if she'd be my evil twin. No, no. Mm. And I'm sure that there's some complicity that you and your sister have that nobody else has. Yeah, we for sure do. It's really a special relationship. And I feel like we're able to do so many things that I don't think I would be able to do on my own because I have her. Since she's not here, though, I will say she is the evil twin, but we won't call her that. <laughs> well, thank you so much for doing this. This was really amazing to get to talk to you, and I'm so excited for people to get to hear your story and about what you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you for your sweet voice, your, your, your sweet face. and I'm, uh, It's too bad that your sister wasn't here, but she was here with you. Yeah, she was definitely here in spirit. Keep shining that beautiful light of yours. The world needs you. Oh, thank you. You too. Thank you. Bye.